Each day starts with the promise of a beautiful world where dreams could be fulfilled and all the pain and sorrow would perish. Ever since man descended on this earth, the most crucial question had been to survive. Since time immemorial, humans have been colonizing near rivers and somewhere down the line, they used bridges to cross over and interact with other communities. Since then, it has been a journey of development, but even today, the parameters of existence remain the same. An inherent desire to conquer and communicate also gave rise to construct bridges where accessibility was difficult. Interacting with each other to communicate was important for growth. People are lonely because they build walls instead of bridges. Later, they build bridges to communicate and develop. This exchange of cultures brought about radical changes in sociological pattern of life. Bridges became the link between different societies which helped in accelerating growth. We are talking about a more realistic aspect of the word bridge here. A bridge is a structure built to span physical obstacles such as a body of water, valley or road for the purpose of providing passage over the obstacle. Bridges help in creating connectivity between societies. We all know the process of development in any state or country is known by its connectivity to its people. In the post-independence era, India needed access to its rural areas where connectivity was still a problem. Due to the formation of states, the major responsibility of creating infrastructure was handed to respective states. But none of the new development schemes could be implemented properly because of poor connectivity. Hence roads and linking became the topmost priority. In Bihar, the situation was no different. It had virtually very little or no access to its remote areas. The entire state is blessed with many rivers and rivulets, which became a problem instead of resource. Most of the areas remained cut off in rainy season due to flooding, thus hampering the development activities. The people living in remote areas had no choice but to cross over by boat for their daily needs. This problem became more acute in the rainy season. Even in normal times, people had to cross by boats to save time and effort. In order to find a solution to this complex situation, an organization called Bihar Rajya Pul Nirman Nigam, BRPNN, was formed on 11th June 1975 under the Indian Company Act 1956. As a government company, the Nigam's objective was to build bridges in the state, ravaged by floods every year. However, it could only build 319 bridges in the 30 years of its existence, from 1975 to 2005, and turned into a liability with an accumulated loss of 17 crore rupees. At that time, the situation in BPRNN was not conducive to efficient work culture. This hampered any effort to initiate development plans. Sense of belonging and desire to contribute in the progress of state had to be inculcated among all the working community. Creation is an alternative form of desire, resulting in fulfilling needs. But when they are not met, then it generates negative attitude all around. In order to fulfill the needs of people and accelerate the process of development, BPRNN appointed a young officer to resurrect the company. A difficult but achievable task. In April 2006, after joining as chairman of Bihar Rajapulnar Manigam, the biggest challenge was to understand the problems. 
and I interacted with my employees, with the contractors, with people in field. And of course, uh, simultaneously, uh, I undertook study of some successful organizations also. So after three, four months, one thing was very clear, that if this corporation has to revive or it has to survive, then there, are, there were some fundamental uh, problems which we had to get rid of. So two issues we zeroed in, two major challenges. One was, so we had to get out of this liquidation. And second was, there was no board. Thus began the journey of one of the most enviable success stories of Bihar. Although an individual becomes less important in the event of things which happen on a large scale, yet it is the leadership of one person who makes it come through. To bring an ailing company back on its track, there were certain fundamental things which had to be addressed immediately. Create a sense of belonging among staff. Give them lucrative incentives and then push. Organize and plan each detail with ground level support. Maintain a high degree of discipline and order. Inspire to innovate and develop trust. In order to instill the confidence among its employees, a lot of motivational exercises were undertaken by BPRNN. A professional expert was called to conduct motivational classes. Training camp seminars were organized for skill upgradation. Art of living classes and regular interaction with the family members by calling it as the Bara Khana and celebration of all festivals, having brainstorming sessions with the staff and a mandatory yearly health checkup for its staff were some of the measures undertaken to enhance the psychological mindset of their employees. Besides this visit by senior officials at sites prompted fast decisions being taken and restoring the confidence of its employees. There were lots of problems in taking administrative decisions and it took a long time for site in charge to communicate with head office. Thus the first step was to hand over the administrative powers to site officers for taking immediate measures. In this manner, communication windows were open round the clock and any officer could directly communicate with senior officer, including chairman. They were given all the modern tools for successfully conducting their respective duties, like GPRS-enabled mobile sets. Engineers were also provided with vehicles to help them go round for frequent inspections. They were given an allowance of 18,000 rupees per month for visits. Incentives-based scheme was introduced to reward good work by giving them a holiday abroad. There were a lot of discrepancies in awarding contracts. This was rectified by bringing transparency in the procedure. It started processing all work orders and awarding through internet whereupon all the details were open for public. To check corruption and delays in meeting deadlines, the monitoring system was made foolproof. A system of regular interaction was established, whereupon even senior officials were asked to remain vigilant round the clock. Another method which was introduced, the mobile inspection system, where all executive engineers had a GPRS-enabled SIM card in their phones. The details were then directly sent to the chairman and senior officers who saw the same on his computer in his office. Even the designing of bridges was taken with the help of computers and digitization of complete process was some of the measures which helped in overall development of the Bihar Rajyapul Nirman Nigam. A state-of-the-art fitness facility was installed at the head office fully equipped library to enhance their intellectual prowess. These measures instilled a new confidence in the Nigam and created a new sense of belonging, which was crucial for the implementation of objectives. The ball was set rolling, and now it required a proper mechanism to ensure it did not slip back to its earlier avatar. After these exercises, there was another problem which had to be addressed. There were a lot of pending projects which have been lingering on for years and to redefine the image of the Nigam, it was important to complete them first. Out of these, Katunja and Sitamari, Jabua and Katihar, 
Labha in Katihar were pending for around 10 years. Katunja has a unique significance. It is geographically situated in Muzaffarpur district, although the approach road falls in the Sitamari district. It is being built on Bagmati River. One of the major problems in completing the projects was land acquisition, which the Nigam had to face in order to complete the projects. At several locations, the cost went up due to villagers demanding more compensation for their land. It was again sorted by negotiations with the help of senior officer at the district level. This move got full support from the state government, which initiated prompt action on field. A bridge between Arwal and Sahar became the first venture to be tested after the intervention of new policies in the Nigam. It connects Arwal, Bhojpur, Jahanabad, Rotas and Aurangabad. The bridge is 2,040 meters long, which is being made on the pre-cast segmental construction technique. The fabrication unit is located nearby to save time and cost. They are shifted as per requirement and then placed at the point on the span. At each 60 meter span, five spans are placed in continuity and in this manner, expansion joint comes at 300 meters. This facilitates the flow of traffic and also improves the riding quality of traffic. This is the first time in Bihar when 60 meter box girder structure is constructed. One can see glimpses of life as it used to be. People had to cross by boat, which had no fixed timing, thereby resulting in unnecessary wastage of time and energy. On completion, it will improve connectivity of Sitamari, Sheohar, along with traffic to Nepal. Apart from these, many more districts will benefit from this initiative. <laughs> Bridges are constructed departmentally by the Negam on the basis of current schedule of rates sanctioned for works department. As the work is done departmentally, cost incurred is less as compared to work done by contractors. Another significant bridge which was lingering on for years is on Bagmati River at Dubbag Hart on Sitamari Shiohar Road. It is 600 meters long and constructed at a cost of 35 crores. In Saharsa, a bridge has been constructed on the river Gandak between Baluhava Ghat and Gondola. This will have direct impact on the lives of people living in the region. Denied of basic necessities in life, now they will have the facility of this bridge to join the mainstream. Both sides of the Mithyanchal are divided by this river, thus creating the connection which was most needed. This bridge has national as well as international significance. Upon crossing the bridge, vehicles going towards Darbhanga will get connected to State Highway 56 and vehicles going towards Sapol will get connected to State Highway 66 and 73. All traffic would also benefit from this connection. A bridge's economic efficiency depends on the site and volume of traffic.